més de 100 espectacles i activitats. El grec s'estén per la ciutat. Torna el fauna de les nits d'estiu. Hola, bon dia. Seguim amb les presentacions dels espectacles del festival. I ja comencem aquesta setmana amb espectacles internacionals. I ara passaré a l'anglès per poder seguir la conversa amb la Sània. I els que esteu seguint la roda de premsa des de casa podeu canviar el canal amb l'idioma que preferiu, tindreu la traducció al català, o si no, en anglès que seguirem fins ara. I'm going to switch to English for you. Welcome, Sània. Thank you. <laughs> it's a big pleasure to have you here in Barcelona for the first time presenting a work in Barcelona, I think. I don't know if in yes. Spain it's the first time. First time. So thank you for accepting our invitation in this festival. Uh, for the festival, it's very important to have this piece here because uh, the festival is talking about Europe and we thought Europe is, not, is a concept very abstract, but uh, we have to be aware of our past and our communist past also as a, as a, as a continent, maybe. And um, I know this is a not a new piece for you. It's an old piece that you have, haven't done for a few years. Uh, so thanks for accepting doing that because I think it's relevant. And at least for us, it was very relevant to have you in, in, in the festival. So tell us a bit about, maybe first we start with the piece and then about you and about other projects you have. Um, yeah. This piece was created when? Um, well, first, thank you for inviting us, and it's a pleasure to be here and first time to present work in Barcelona. Um, the performance um, was created in 2016, and it's a co-production with uh, Theatre from Belgrade, and since then we have been touring a lot uh, in Europe. Also, we were in Brazil, and uh, uh, so it was really, uh, well, we played a lot. But then because of COVID and um, period when we couldn't travel so much, we, we didn't show the piece, so we are really happy after three years to come here and to perform. We, <laughs> we had to remember things. <laughs> Um, the performance is made uh, together with my uh, colleague and friend, um, actor uh, Vladimir Aleksic, who lives and works in uh, Belgrade. Um, and he's also my childhood friend. We are from the same for real. city. For real. We are from the same city. We were living even in the same street, going to the same elementary school. And uh, since, um, since childhood, we have been um, together, friends, but then, of course, our paths um, separated. He went to live in Italy. I went to live first in the Netherlands and then to Belgium. So we both... Did you tell in the, in the, in the, in the piece, you piece. tell some of the stories? Some huh? of the stories, yes. And then we actually come together to, we came together to make this show to reflect upon the idea of the country which doesn't exist anymore, in which we are born, uh, born uh, former Yugoslavia what is left of the values of that country, um, how do we perceive uh, ourselves today as uh, two people who grew up on certain values which are lost. Mm. And uh, we are telling personal stories, we are also referring to some collective um, values such as education or physical education that we grew up in the performance. So it's a kind of mix between personal stories and dance. You, you did also with some examples from cinema, no? Yes, we chose 58 extracts from um, movies uh, on which we grew up. Uh, we had at the time a very rich um, cinema uh, industry. Um, what was beautiful about that time is that all the movies were actually co-productions between different countries of former Yugoslavia, Croatia, Macedonia, Serbia, Slovenia, and all of them uh, were making these movies together, which were huge productions. Uh, and in, at the time we liked to make a joke and to say that it was our Hollywood time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and actually uh, we are using uh, these film extracts as a third player almost in the show because it's two of us on stage and there are movies, movies. that are projected and there is interaction of course with the, with the movies. Um, so we use also that story um, of a film industry to explain what has happened uh, in a transition period from 
communist. Movies that were Europe. very popular at the time. So you, you very know, popular. You were you were like double dubbing the, the voices yeah. and yeah, uh, yeah. And everybody, I mean, when we perform in former Yugoslavia, everybody knows these movies. They can even say, you know, the replicas from the movies. <laughs> everybody knows them. And uh, they were uh, the, the actors were also very popular, uh, and uh, this is something that it's almost not possible anymore. Uh, it was like co-productions with uh, countries from like ex Yugoslavia, or yeah. also from other parts of the like the communist. Also, uh, also, but also not not just communist countries. It was also like a lot of like uh, Hollywood actors were coming, for example, to make and to. Uh, to to do a co-production, we are also talking about that a bit in the show. In some moment, that Richard Burton was also coming, for example, and uh, in the time of Tito, it was uh, it was not only uh, Yugoslav production, but there were also some co-productions with uh, countries from uh, from abroad. But we have been producing, for example, yearly in the 80s, uh, yearly around 200 documentary movies and 400 feature movies, which is today, you cannot, you cannot do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Rima B, the traduction. <laughs> ask if it's okay for the translator. Uh, and um, also, uh, I think you're mixing those, we, we, we've talked already about films, mm -hmm. about your personal story. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also some moments uh, where you talk about uh, how was living in the in that country in like uh, um, the, the, the the celebrations that you did the the choreo the group choreographies um, and w what age did you have at the time what 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 until what which until which uh, you were like teenager or is what childhood um, when uh, when we were still celebrating Tito's birthdays uh, we were uh, really uh, elementary school, both of us, and we remember, I mean, I was, for example, really playing on big stadium, these mass parades, uh, and then, uh, we are actually the last pioneer generation. We are the last pioneers who were giving an oath that we are going to be faithful to our country, etc. So we were in elementary school, let's say we were 10, something like that mm. but then we are also referring to the beginning and end the war in the 90s in which we were uh, teenagers and then going to studies uh, so 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 actually we are really in this transition period from um, uh, communist era entering into neoliberal we are also referring to of course to uh, um, um, period of 91 to 99 in which then the war happened uh, and uh, and that is also a question that we ask is it something that we remember from former Yugoslavia just a childhood memory because we were children and in our perception it might be different than what was it in reality uh, so we also have a part of the show then and we actually question that and ask somebody to help us understand how it really was. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's not a conversation, but we could also talk about our childhood with Franco and the, re and the dictatorial regime in Spain, which uh, it's funny because not so many people has addressed that uh, as a theater show, which you did, which is uh, fantastic to, for us to see that. And, um, but also like in some moments of the piece, you also refer to the situation today. What, what has happened to the, all this film industry? What is, what is, what is it today in, in, in the new situation in the country and so on, right? Yes, it was interesting when we started making the production in 2016, actually the biggest film um, company, which is called Avala uh, from Serbia, uh, at the time was put on a public auction. So it was to be sold. And we were following process really uh, closely during our rehearsals. And what has happened in the end that uh, one taxi driver bought the whole film industry, a taxi driver for amount it was cheap for amount which was ridiculous. So he not only bought the whole um, building, not only bought all the costumes and requisites that were used in the film, but also all the films. So uh, it was quite a scandalous to know that actually the country is still paying for maintaining the movies because it's expensive process. You need to put movies underground to keep them under certain uh, temperature and so on. But that they suddenly belong to a, 
a private person, but we still don't know who is actually the real owner because it's, it's not possible, <laughs> it's taxi driver. So we were following this process quite closely and, uh, and kind of integrating it also in the performance, but this just shows or it's just an example of privatization that has happened in uh, former Yugoslavia. At the moment, we also have a huge project in Belgrade, which is called um, Belgrade on Water. It's also investment uh, of a very rich... Uh, Let's yeah. talk about the new projects in a second. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. No, 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 because I, we want to talk about the new projects. But before we go to new projects, maybe if there's somebody who has some question about that, that old project, maybe just in, you can interrupt us. Si tens alguna pregunta sobre aquest projecte, en qualsevol moment ens podeu interrompre. Si no, anirem a parlar dels projectes futurs també de la Sània. En català, no? Puc fer? Entenc del que ens expliques que una mica poses en qüestió el relat que aquí principal que tenim a l'Europa Occidental de la caiguda del mur com l'arribada de la llibertat i la final de les dictadures. Voleu fer un relat diferent? Potser més íntim? Trencar alguns tòpics que s'han creat al llarg d'aquests anys? Well, I have been, uh, I, I emigrated uh, from um, Serbia in 2000, 2001, uh, and I often was um, faced with a question, uh, oh, where do you come from, from Serbia? And I always had to explain, no, I come from former Yugoslavia, because this is the country where I'm born in. Uh, and then, for a lot of people, the next question is, yes, but w from where, from former Yugoslavia? Then I have to say, from Serbia. The next thing is, ah, so did you, did you experience war? So somehow I was always marked with this um, um, question, or, or, or people were connecting Serbia, former Yugoslavia, with war. And my show that I did in 2009 was about war. But then I thought I would also like to speak about uh, something that it's not so much present in, a, uh, let's say, a outside image of Yugoslavia and Serbia. And this is the whole industry, film industry, which was beautiful. I mean, we had so many movies that were uh, just not known to international audience. And uh, for me, that was kind of another way, uh, maybe more positive a way to approach to a story uh, which in international circles, but also in Serbia, is always connected to the war in the 90s. And yes, we are talking about the war in the 90s, but this was not the main focus in this performance. The main focus was to show um, that um, in the time in which uh, there were definitely uh, um, uh, things that were not good, oppressed, and so on, but in that time, there was uh, industry, film industry, that could function. There were values, which is solidarity. The health system was uh, uh, regulated. So there are values that are very positive. And why not also talk about those values? Even, even if we remember them as children, it is something that marked our childhood uh, in, a, in a positive way. So, um, so this was an attempt, indeed, to uh, maybe approach to, to a general image from slightly different perspective this time. That's why you call it, it's, I am not ashamed. Of yes, yes, yeah. Alguna altra cosa, Guillem? No? Well, maybe I would, I would really want to know about other projects that you, you, you have done after this or you are doing now. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we, we know from Cathy Say that you made a co-production in, because you, you live now in, in Brussels or in Belgium. Yes. Uh, you are working regularly with KBS, yeah. which we have a, a very good relation with and with KBS we collaborate a lot every year. So um, tell us about other projects you have done after this or before yeah. this if you want. Yeah. Uh, so after this, I, um, I will mention just a couple of them. 
Uh, I did um, production. I was invited to direct for um, Nantera Mandier. It's a national theater also in, a, in like part of Paris where I made a production, uh, My Revolution is Better Than Yours, which was about the legacy of 68. Uh, after then, I was invited. Not in, in, in general, uh, in or in your in, in also in, in Yugoslavia, no. Uh, it was uh, 68 more as in international, Paris, international, no, no, international movement because we all have our national 68, but my show was really about international perspective, and that was also in the frame of that was done in 2018 when there was a uh, yeah like big celebration of 68. And then I was invited by Schaubühne um, to by Thomas Ostermeyer to direct for their ensemble. Right. So I was here yesterday. Yes, I know. <laughs> so uh, I had made a performance with ensemble of Schaubühne, uh, which was called uh, Danke Deutschland. Uh, it was uh, about Vietnamese immigration in Germany. So I mixed. Um, uh, part of the cast was ensemble of Schaubühne and part were uh, Vietnamese immigrants, both from South and from uh, North Vietnam. After that, I did a uh, performance in uh, National Flemish Theatre, KVS, that was October last year. And um, uh, one of the performances is actually a uh, singer from uh, Barcelona, you know. Kati, Kati Say, yeah, yes. from Say Sisters. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it was a concert performance in which four women are mainly singing uh, the experiences of different women. Uh, we did a research um, about um, women who had um, some, somehow were separated from their children or from their daughters. So the, the, the performance was inspired uh, by the myth of Demeter. Um, and we are uh, kind of um, using these stories mm, to make, we use those stories to make songs. So it is a kind of concert performance with some elements of rituals in between. And it's all female cast. Um, and uh, yeah, the show has had a um, Belgian uh, tour and uh, now we are a bit on hold and we will uh, go further. And then after that, I did just now, I came out in May in Belgrade with a new production. It's the first time that I directed a show that I didn't write. Uh -huh. So it was written by five different uh, writers from the region, from Serbia and Croatia. And it was a project um, that uh, talks about fashion industry. Um, and uh, I worked with uh, actresses there also from, uh, from Belgrade. And it was also my collaboration with Vladimir again, mm -hmm. because he produced the project, he initiated it. And I was invited to direct. He lives in Belgrade and he works there as a producer now, no? Yes, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't know, is there something in common in your projects? Are you interested in, in roots or in, uh, in it's more social kind of issues, what you are interested in? I'm always interested in, and that's maybe also answer to go back to your question, I'm always interested in um, narratives that we get in media uh, through um, historical books or accounts and uh, personal stories. And I'm always interested uh, in um, showing actually that uh, official history is written by somebody and, and it's not everything that, that uh, uh, common people are exper experiencing. So for me, zooming in into a personal stories, it's always a um, starting point. And uh, I try to balance then what we know and think we know and what actually the real experience uh, is. So it's totally different from documentary theater. It's more about the starting with the experiences of people. No? Yes. In a way, in, in the frame of, a, of a, a bigger like history. Or big narratives, yes. Big narratives. Yes. I mean, I call it documentary, but I like to flirt a bit with, uh, with, uh, with this term. I don't like it so much because it puts, it, it makes it very narrow. I'm making it, I start from uh, something that happened in reality, but I make it also abstract and I make abstractions of it. So I, I like to really uh, play with, with reality. It's like how, how uh, something that is lived 
what kind of transformation it gets to get on stage. I'm really interested in that. So in a way, you don't play with fiction, but you play with uh, how people has lived the situation. So it might not be the real thing. It's yeah. how people live the, yes, the exactly. stories. Yeah, exactly. And also in the process of staging some material, for me, the most important is what the actors are feeling with the material, how they experience it. And then maybe from there, we get into some abstraction, but uh, the connection between me material is the most important. How, how do I experience here being on stage? How do I experience certain um, image of myself? So this is, this is main focus, I would say. And then you use what elements you have, like music or video or... Or dance. Uh, I like also to use a lot of um, physical actions. So for me, it's not about only rational um, uh, reflection, but it's also about body, how my body uh, feels and uh, what kind of impulses I can get from presence. Uh, sometimes, like in I'm not ashamed of my communist past, I'm using movies as a kind of uh, counterpoint. So there is, always, um, there is always one main element with which I, I like to kind of confront people on stage with. In the matter calling, in this show that I did for KVS, that was music. It was uh, songs and yes. Uh, um, so I would say I'm using all kinds of different genres in, in every each performance. It's another format almost, but there is, a, there is an interest for, uh, for um, narrative, for telling the story through really experiences of people. Do you have a still connection with uh, the, the theater scene in Belgrade? Or uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a bit, because we, we don't know much about what's going on. I, I knew there was a big festival, theater festival in Belgrade, but yeah. I lost, with the pandemic, I lost a bit the track. What is happening today there? Um, well, I just did now this uh, production, so I spent there two uh, months, which was so you, you really nice. <laughs> yes, and it was for me, uh, after six years, I was invited to direct in my own language, and that was, oh, that was so nice. <laughs> but... Um, I, I have a regular connection with them. Uh, Bitev uh, asked me to be in the jury of the festival, so I came like two years ago. Um, I regularly show uh, performances there. And uh, now after this show, I'm invited to direct for the first time really a text, which is not my text. So now we are... A writer from... Yeah, uh, yeah existing text. Yeah. So now we are looking into what it could be, because it would be really first... I mean, now I did this show that was written by six writers, but it, it was six monologues and then I had to make something out of it. Mm -hmm. But now the next step is really existing text that is a play. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will be, prem the premiere will be um, in January 24. Mm -hmm. So I will go back there again to work. So I would say I have uh, quite regular uh, connection now yes and is there like a new generation is like is this is burning <laughs> yes i was really surprised uh, there are so many young people that are very engaged um, all of them are co actually collaborating with each other so also this last project that we did it's something very unusual because i had a cast of five different actresses that are all connected to city theaters, but they are all working for different theaters. So actually we made ensemble from actresses from different ensembles, which it's really hard to imagine, for example, in, um, in Belgium. Or, and um, and uh, they have this uh, yearly festival, uh, BITEF, which is international festival, which uh, shows the work of international uh, directors. Um, but uh, for uh, young generations, um, I'm, I'm, I was very happy to see the works of um, some choreographers which were emerging and, uh, and theater writers which are very active and uh, I read the plays and I was really uh, positively surprised. Mm -hmm. So I would say there is a... Something happening. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Si hay més preguntes o alguna altra cosa, Guillem? No sé com anem de temps, jo m'enrotllo. I talk too much sometimes, so I don't know. Is there any more questions or something? 
¿no? Sí. Eh, eh, Tornando una mica a la, a la producción que tenemos aquí al Grec, eh, yo me pregunto si en, al llarg de que temps que, que ha girado y cuando la vas presentar también al grado, si se ha checado sus susceptibilidades. Porque yo me imagino una mica lligant amb el que ha comentat abans el Cesc, de que fem, yo, yo fes, por ejemplo, una obra sobre la meva infantesa durante el franquismo, que ha suposat ya ha records brillantes y, y bonics, y creo que ya habría quien no le no agradaría, o que checaría sus actividades. No sé si la teva también va a checar -ne. Um, yes, of course, we had, the, we, we had sometimes um, the reactions that were, but it wasn't so, uh, it wasn't so bright. Uh, there were also uh, other things that were happening. But then, as I said, um, I see this performance actually as a second part of the trilogy that I'm making. Uh, the first part was really about war and how we experienced war and what has happened for us uh, in the 90s. This part is talking more about um, transition in a sense of going from uh, communist to neoliberal and actually decaying of industry. So I wasn't so much focused on the period of 80s. The beginning of the show talks about that, uh, but we are aware that we were children and we explicitly say that in the show. Maybe it wasn't like that, but I do believe, and I, I uh, stand for that, that there are certain values that are lost. So, of course, some people might say or feel offended saying, but it wasn't so all bright, but that's, uh, that, the, that was even not the focus of my performance. My performance was, uh, is asking the question, what are the values that we all can agree that they, they were positive and they don't exist anymore? such as, as I said, solidarity, uh, you know, social system that was equal for everyone, uh, health system that was arranged, and so on. So on that point, I would say nobody, can, uh, nobody came to give some objection, because I think uh, it's, it's stating the obvious, that it was for some people just better. And the last part of the trilogy, which one is the project that you mentioned, you said, the first was the word, the second is this, and the third part? Uh, the third one I'm preparing, uh, I would uh, like to make the third part, which would be ending part, uh, and I would like to make it really co -pro uh, international co-production. Uh, I would start from uh, photos of my father, um, who made pictures of, um, he was working for insurance company and made the pictures of the buildings and of the damage of the buildings. So I would like to use those photos to actually metaphorically talk also about damage in people and uh, damage that is not only materialistic but also psychological and so on. So that would be my last part, closing this trilogy uh, about former Yugoslavia. In, in which period do you concentrate that, uh, that, that third piece? Is, is there like a, a time it, period? No. It's like after May, May. so it's uh, after. after what happened after uh, the mm -hmm. war. And when is that? Because we have to be. Uh, <laughs> so we had uh, the, so the war was between ninety one and uh, to ninety five. Then there was post war, and then there was of course NATO no, bombardment. No, no. When will you uh, uh, premiere the piece? Ah, this uh, I I am hoping to do it um, to so the end uh, twenty three. Okay, so we have to be aware, uh, alert about that yeah. <laughs> after your success, because this, the show is sold out, which is it's very, f it's fantastic yes. that there's so much interest. Yes, it's really uh, wonderful. The first uh, part, which was uh, made a long time ago, it was made in 2008, uh, and uh, the name was uh, Will You Ever Be Happy Again? That one was also touring uh, really a lot internationally. So, um, so this one was made 2008. Now this one, 2016, so it's a little bit less gap between second and third, but I feel it's the right moment to, to close the trilogy. And then you continue directing for other companies around the world, like you did with Shaobune. Are you invited in some other... Yes, uh, uh, I have a new production coming for... I will make a performance for Ensemble in Dortmund, okay. a theater in Dortmund. 
Um, the premiere is January 23. Mm -hmm. So this is now the next one. Um, and uh, there will be seven actors on stage. Among other things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Molt bé, em sembla que hem fet un bon repàs, no sé quina hora és, 36. I think we've gone, is there anything else you want to tell us? Or how much you know about Spanish theater? It's like, you know. We can have a talk about it. Yeah, we can have a talk later. I would like, yes, yes, I would like to know. You are in a very good theater, Teatre Lliure. I like it a lot, it's really beautiful. Si hi ha alguna altra cosa, si no preferim fer les curtes, les presentacions, perquè encara ens queda teca durant aquest festival. Alguna altra cosa? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight. Yes, thank you. And thank you again for inviting us. Gràcies. Kako mjenja se vrijeme, evo što biva od jedne teme, nekad ju je zaljubljeno svirao list, a da... 60-ih godina snima se puno muzičkih komedija koje prate razvoj jugoslovenske pop kulture. Biti zvezda u jugoslovenskom filmu značilo je da ste stvarno jugoslovenska zvezda. Ovdje je reka Begej koja protiče, ide sve do severa grada, do pivnice. E, a ti si tu, išao na dramsku radionicu, je li tako? I da uzrati kako treba, 93, 3, 4, 5, 6, nisi lošar, ni prvi, 7, ajmo. Jer tako kratak je dan, a neku džuri se svijet, i vrijeme sada svira jedan novi ludi koncert. Opet su jutro skrocali, Užitu makovi crveni Kao na ruletu kad se ukriče grad I paganini stari drug čije bi svirao sad A neko čuri se svijet I vrijeme sada svira jedan novi ljudi koncert Što si se ti vratio u Srbiju? 